Sea monsters have been a part of human mythology since the first moment people could step foot into the water. Many ancient people told tales of sea monsters, such as the legendary warring Vikings. Vikings traveled the seas, looking for land to conquer and empires to combat. But legends tell of Vikings finding more than other people in violent waters. Instead, they tell of monstrous nightmares produced by the sea. And today, I'll be sharing with you 10 modern and allegedly real sightings of sea monsters. Speaking of hardcore Vikings, this video is sponsored by Vikings War of Clans, allowing me to make this video free of any other ads. Vikings War of Clans is a free and fun mobile game inspired by the famous strategy and RPG games of the 90s, like Empire Earth or Starcraft. But what makes Vikings World so addictive is that more than 20 million online players are constantly changing the way the game evolves by never-ending fighting over resources, forging new alliances, and competing in live events. Support my channel and my sponsor by downloading Vikings free with the link in the description below and get the special bonus of 200 gold coins and a protective shield. Don't forget to look me up and join my Vikings clan, Dark Ones, under my nickname, Darkness Prevails. Plus, this month, Vikings is holding a contest in which you can win four drones. They're giving away three Spark DJIs for $400 for those who reach the 10th level, and one Phantom for $800 to those who reach the highest level in the game. The contest will be held on Friday, October 5th in the Instagram on Vikings page. That link is in the description as well. Thanks so much to Vikings War of Clans for sponsoring this video. Support the scary stories you love and get a free new game by downloading Vikings with the link in the description. Thank you. Now then, let's try to be as brave as those Vikings and face some real life sea beasts. It couldn't have been a shark. Buy squids with chips. This happened last summer while on a diving trip. We were all staying on a catamaran in the waters surrounding the Caribbean island of Seba. Seba is known for its great efforts to prevent pollution of both their island and the marine park surrounding it. It was our second night there and we were all excited to hear that we could go on a night dive. Night dives are always creepy because you can't see much through the dark waters, except what your flashlight is shining on. Anyway, we had our dinner around nine in the evening and began to get ready. We put our gear together and brought it to the back of the boat where we would then take our big strides in. Our dive master was talking to the skipper who seemed a little unsure. Off of what we could gather from the conversation, the skipper was positive that we should be situated near a broad stretch of coral reef, but the diver replied that there was nothing but sand. This struck me as odd in the sense that they've been doing this specific route for a long time, but I brushed it off. Once everyone was ready, we all attached glow sticks of matching colors to our tanks and to our dive buddies. For those of you who don't scuba dive, divers use a buddy system to ensure that no one gets lost or gets in a nasty situation like running low on air without assistance. I was paired with a kid named Kay. We got along pretty well and both of us enjoyed staying away from the group and I'm sure you know that's a pretty stupid thing to do. But we figured that as long as we could see the group, we would be fine. So of course, once we had gotten down to the sea floor, which was about 55 to 60 feet below, we spread out. It was abnormally cold for being in the Caribbean, even if it was night and we were deep down. Kay and I were a good five feet apart from each other, but we would routinely signal each other to make sure we were okay. I spent the first few minutes of the dive leisurely looking around, which gave me a bit of perspective. If you were to look up, you would see a small patch of light from the moon, and that's about it. Eventually, Kay and I started to swim closer to each other. As we had begun to lag behind, we were around 15 feet behind the group when I noticed something drifting along the bottom. I shone my light on it 
only to see parts of decaying sea animals. I got curious, as I usually am, and swam past it a little. I was honestly hoping to see a shark or something of the sort, but instead, I found a huge pit in the ground. It was in no way natural. It looked more like something big had dug it. My initial thought was something along the lines of, oh, it must be one of those fish that digs nests to attract a mate, but it was way too big for that to be feasible. It looked like a sizable shark could fit inside it. Unfortunately, that wasn't the worst part. The pit was filled with varying sizes of bones and other decaying things. I didn't know what to do, what to think, so I did a sharp 180 and swam back as fast as I could. I made it back to the group and we kept going. About five minutes later, we heard a loud low noise reverberate through the water. It was almost similar to a whale call, but it had this lower growl under the screech. I turned to my friend and based off of what his expression was telling me, he hadn't heard it. On the other hand, I was starting to freak out a little bit, but I kept my breathing under check to make sure I didn't lose too much oxygen. Once again, I brushed it off and kept swimming, telling myself I was just paranoid because the water was so dark. Maybe 15 minutes later, our group found a baby flounder. We all gathered round and watched it as it clumsily swam around. I stayed a bit longer. Kay stayed a good halfway in between me and the group to make sure I could find my way back. I don't know what led me to turn around toward the pit, but I did, and my flashlight cut through the darkness. If there's anything I regret, it's that I had to look back. In the distance, I saw what I originally mistook as a large fish. It was spiny, not to mention unnaturally pale, and it had these long limbs. It looked so bizarre that I couldn't take my eyes away from it. I saw that it was swimming towards me, and that's when I realized the creature didn't have a tail or any sort of appendage which could aid it in swimming because the creature wasn't a fish. It was clawing its way painfully through the water with these long, thin arms, which seemed to bend the wrong way every time. I was perplexed and kept watching this thing. From what I could gather, it looked as if you took the bones of some large creature, then stretched waterlogged human skin over it. Obviously, it was hideous. The thing stared at me with these horrendous silver eyes, and what I could only assume was its mouth seemed to bubble. This thing then let out a loud scream, almost the same one as the one I heard before. I think that's what tore my eyes away from it. I slowly started to swim backwards before I decided to screw it and booked it out of there. I made it back to the group and we soon ascended to the surface. I was a bit shaken up, of course, but I calmed down once I was out of the water. I ended up asking the dive master about it, or at least tried. She asked me if what I saw had big eyes that lit up when you shined a light at them. I answered yes, thinking that I was getting somewhere, but then she brushed it off as a tuna fish. I mean, I know what a freaking tuna fish looks like, and there was no way that was a tuna. Needless to say, I stayed awake for a while that night, and I did not sleep very restfully for the rest of our time near Seba. Just remember, if you go night diving around a sandy area off the coasts of Seba, be aware of what may be living there. I was attacked by an aquatic monster by Christian B.T. I was an adventurous kid, and I loved spending time outside. My brother was a supporting factor since he would join me in my fun adventures. I had a very loving and supporting family, which led to my father taking me on various trips, and one of them was a diving trip. I lived up in British Columbia at the time, 
and it was an amazing place to me. It was mountainous, tree-filled, which made for an amazing sight. I also loved swimming, and I'd go swimming wherever I could, whether it was at the cottage or in a public school. Because of this, I thought diving would be splendid and an amazing time to discover new things, not to mention I'd get a spectacular look at underwater sights. There was only one problem. I was afraid of large bodies of water. I've heard shark attack stories and stories about sea creatures of massive sizes, which honestly scared the living hell out of me. I sucked it up though and told myself to stop being such a baby. Besides, shark attacks in British Columbia? Huge sea monsters out for human blood? No way, that all sounded like it couldn't happen to someone like me. Unfortunately, I was very wrong. Now my dad was an experienced diver, which is what led him to prompting me to do this. He had taught me the basics, and we have dived a few times before, but this one experience had made me stay further away from the water, probably for the rest of my life. We had gotten ready for the next dive and were getting on the boat to ride to the next location. When we arrived, I looked down into the water. It looked clear and fresh, like a sheet of glass. My dad had already dropped down into the water and I was putting my flippers on. Water's cold, he shouted up to me. Ugh, I hated cold water. It made the surroundings feel sinister. Various chills ran up my spine as I splashed into the water, making for an uncomfortable first impression. We had never been to this body of water before, and every time I thought about it, I can't remember the name of the place. I lowered myself under the water, starting my descent. Since I was still quite new, I made sure to follow my dad everywhere he went. I wanted to stay close behind him. I stopped to take everything in, it was quite beautiful. The rocks, the fish, the atmosphere. It was very scenic, and I had been the type of person to admire that. I took a deep breath, but with every breath, I worried more. I was always that type of what-if guy, and I was always cautious when it came to how much air I had left in my tank. I turned to follow my dad, but as I turned around, my heart sank. I could not see my dad. He was gone. The water was clear and he should have been right there. I started to panic, breathing in faster and heavier, wasting more oxygen. I thought about swimming up and getting back on the boat, but I'd only been down there for a short period. Besides, my dad was probably just trailing off, looking at what there was to see. I calmed down and then decided I should do the same. I was 15, I told myself. I didn't need a parent around me all the time. I continued my sightseeing and came across a murky area. I thought some fish had stirred up the soil, making the water all cloudy. I soon found a more rocky area, but there was no fish around, which was odd because there should have been more of them. Fish love the rocks, right? I finally gave in and decided to go back up. But as I was about to go, something caught my eye. There was movement underneath some of the rocks. I watched helplessly as a black silhouette rose from behind the rocks. It appeared to have the head of a snake, and although I could not see the face, I did see the jaw full of sharp, pointed teeth. The eyes were the scariest part, as they had flickered open as if it had been asleep black, empty sockets with tiny yellow pupils. The creature was a little bit bigger than I was. It was scaly from what I could tell, and it had noticed me. I screamed through my suit, and I swam upwards as fast as I could. I didn't even bother looking back down. I thrashed my arms and legs, propelling myself upwards. I felt what I still feel to this day, a bump against my legs. The thing had rammed itself against me, and I was now spiraling. It was strong, throwing me off kilter, knocking the air out of me. I soon regained control and kept swimming. I thought I was going to faint. 
Just before I broke the surface, I heard a strange guttural call coming from below me. I finally reached the surface, and my dad greeted me on the boat. Where have you been? He asked. I said nothing as I climbed up on the boat as fast as I could. When I was solidly on two feet and I caught my breath, I said to him, we have to go. What are you talking about? He said, just go, I wanna go home. I screamed as the boat shifted away. I looked back at the area I had surfaced from and there was a shadow under the water moving. But after a few seconds, it was gone. I sat down, trying to calm myself. We soon made it back to land and back to the car, and I explained what happened to my dad. Ah, probably just a big fish, my dad said to me, but it definitely wasn't a fish, not a normal one anyway. That creature has made me afraid of the water, far more than before, and I never want to swim for the rest of my life. Just remember, if you ever go diving, you might want to stay close to someone and be aware of your surroundings. My Uncle's Creepy Encounter by Aiden The story comes from my uncle, who was an avid fisherman. I can't remember a time when he wasn't fishing or planning to go fishing. We weren't very close, but he did tell me this story before he passed. I will tell this story in the first person from his perspective. Here goes. One day back in 2000, I was on a fishing trip in the middle of the water on my boat. She is a decent size with a small dwelling below deck. That day had been a good day. I had caught a load of fish and at around midnight, I called it a day. But before taking back off to land, I laid down for a moment, enjoying the rocking boat and the sound of the waves around me. I ended up falling asleep. I woke up with a jolt. The boat was rocking violently, and I'd heard a massive splash in the nearby water. Having fallen asleep below deck, I ran up top, trying to get a look at what it was. There was another splash, followed by a big wave, that knocked me off my footing as I ran up the steps, causing me to trip and sprain my ankle. I continued up the stairs, now injured, and I leaned over the edge to get a look at what was going on. That's when I saw it. There was a silhouette in the water, at least 10 meters long. My first thought was that it was a shark, a big one, but I quickly changed my mind when the thing went under my boat. Suddenly, there was a loud boom from beneath me and the boat suddenly began to rock again, as if the creature I had just seen had hit my boat, which really didn't feel too great on my throbbing angle. It took me a moment to stand back up and look back over the edge. I gasped. Where the figure had been before, there was something now protruding from the water, something fleshy and slimy looking. It was dark, earthy green in color, and it had tentacles swarming about in the water around it. Not eight tentacles either, but what appeared to be dozens of them. Just as I was beginning to get a good look at it, it sank below the water and dove deep down until I could no longer see its silhouette, leaving me there, hurt, bewildered, and ready to go home. I truly believe that I narrowly escaped death that day. That's my uncle's story, and from everything I remember, my uncle never saw the thing again, though I do know that he tried several times going back to that spot just to see if he would encounter it once more, which is far braver than anything I would do. Amber Eyes in the Blue Depths by Mitzi. I was a lonely kid. I didn't really have any friends and I was the only child for the first decade of my life until my younger brother was born. So to make up for the lack of human interaction in my life, I was known for having a fertile imagination. 
Wherever I went, whenever it was, everyone in my family says they remember me having more imaginary friends than any kid they could name. They weren't just your common made up goofy creatures or the princess still waiting for a prince. They were mythological creatures like fairies, dwarves, or sometimes small dragons. But what I saw that day, I know was not my imagination. I live in Portugal. When I was younger, my mother and I used to go with her friends on small trips south to a beach, which was fairly known for its tourism. We went there every summer, without an exception, until after this happened. On this particular year, it was only me, my mother, and one of her friends who dragged his nephew who was my age along. His name was Afonso. As soon as we arrived to the small makeshift parking lot, Afonso and I immediately jumped out of the car, grabbing our beach toys and sprinting to the beach. Neither of the adults were worried, since they knew we were smart kids and wouldn't go further than the place where we were supposed to, which was where the water hit the sand. So they took their time taking some of the crucial things from the car trunk and eventually met up with us on the beach itself. The day was overall fun and rather relaxing until we decided to go in the water for the last call before heading to the cabin. While my mom was sunbathing, me, Victor, and Afonso went for one last swim. About 10 minutes passed by, we're playing tag in the water. I was hiding under the surface holding my breath when suddenly a sharp pain in my right leg made me scream, releasing all my air as something began to drag me under. The pain only got worse as something was digging into my flesh. I flailed my arms above me, trying to get away and call for help at the same time, but it wasn't working and I was out of air. The deeper I went, the darker and fuzzier my vision got. The last thing I remember is what scarred me for life. It was a gigantic reptile-like figure in an ill shade of green behind glowing amber eyes. It had its teeth in my leg. I was in such a state of shock, I must have blacked out. It wasn't until later that I woke up in the warmth of my cabin's room, my aching leg now bandaged up. I immediately screamed for my mom, who casually walked over. The first thing I remember asking was, did you get the monster? What monster? My mom asked, with a perplexed look on her face. The monster that pushed me into the water. I basically screamed, but was immediately scolded by my mother. What are you talking about? There was no monster. You just stepped too deep into the water. I don't know exactly what happened afterward but I do remember a lot of arguing with my mother after trying to convince her that it was something beyond natural that had done this to me. There's one thing she can't deny though. If I simply lost my footing in the water, why did it leave me with a tooth-shaped scar on my leg? The Deep by Jack B. The story you're about to hear is one of the scariest experiences of my lifetime, and it kept me from the water, even though I know I'll always be drawn to it. I come from a town built on the beaches of lovely Lake Michigan, and I've always had a passion for sailing. So as you could expect, I spent a lot of time on the water gliding up and down the coastline. On the 4th of July, it was rather packed, as would be expected, with all the tourists in town for the holiday. Many parents and children lined the beach enjoying it happily, but for me, that just sucked, having to drag my boat on a little cart through the countless people trying to get a good seat for the fireworks later that night. Anyway, I had just finished rigging my sailboat and denying 20 or so requests for rides, so I was ready to get in the water and go. But upon arriving at my go-to spot on the sandbar, I was greeted by the smarter tourists who had brought their kayaks and paddle boards. Great, now I had nowhere to go and I had to swim my boat out of the clump of people. As soon as I got out, I just took off. I was done with this tourism crap and I kept sailing outbound until I realized that I was out in the path of the shipping vessels and that I lost wind, so it was dangerous 
because those big things don't change direction as it wastes gas and are on autopilot half the time. I decided it would be best to go back to where it's safe and just deal with the tourists. On my way back, that's when I saw an odd figure beneath my boat. It looked maybe 20 feet long with a snake-like body and six fins. It looked like something straight out of Pokemon, to be honest. That's when I made the worst decision. I tried to change direction to get a better look at it. Lucky for me, it decided to come up for its Loch Ness Monster impression, and my hole clipped it right in the back of the head. At that point, I got a clearer view of it. Its body was silver and scaly, with six black fins to propel it up above the water. It dived after I slammed into it and dispersed quickly as it dove out of sight. I beached my boat and told my dad I had hit something in the water. He soon saw the small dent and the scuff marks and got mad at me for hitting a log. After my delicious lunch of sandwiches with extra sand, I set back out on the water, this time getting through the crowd quicker. I was back out sailing and it started out smooth until I began feeling bumps on the bottom of my boat every couple of seconds. They got louder and louder, then they just stopped. I tried to shake it off, but before I could check what it was, my boat was capsized and I was thrown about five feet away. I tried to swim back to it, but I couldn't because I was petrified when the scaly texture swam past my legs. After that, there was a shooting pain coming up my leg. I was being bitten. Something clamped onto my leg and was dragging me down, and I thought I was going to die. An unknown amount of time later, I woke up in a hospital bed, surrounded by my loved ones and drenched in sweat. The doctors had saved my leg, and it was wrapped in bandages as well as my right arm, which had also been broken. A coast guard had apparently seen me floating up to the top, apparently having been released by the monster. They pulled me out of the water and I was rushed to the hospital. Here I am writing this several months later with my arm healed and my leg healing. I've only convinced few close family members and friends what really happened on the water that day, mostly because my leg didn't look like it had been bitten. It looked like it had gone through a meat grinder. I guess the moral of this story is to stay safe on the water. If you're gonna have fun catching some waves, keep your eyes out. The Bright Lights Underwater in the Dragon's Triangle by Joey the Monster 100. I'm currently serving in the US military. I will not post names or branches for those I worked with and I don't want to give away too much personal information due to PII concerns, but let's dive in. I'm currently aboard a vessel out in the Dragon's Triangle on a mission. During the time period we were out on the water, there was activity that would astound even the most hardened individual into showing signs of fear or subtle emotions that even most people keep tucked away. It was on the evening of the last day of the mission that baffled even the most seasoned men. It started with the lookout informing the bridge that he had spotted an unusual glow beneath the ship. It started as a solitary light, and as time went on, that one light split into multiple. These lights rose out of the water slowly enough for us to realize that the strange signal we tracked into the triangle was this now rising odd light. They made a humming sound as they moved about the ship, as if they were scanning it with its own type of radar. And then, in the blink of an eye, the light scattered in different directions, but it doesn't end there. The very next day, those who had seen the lights previously started experiencing waking nightmares of ghoulish horrors, chasing them down or slaughtering their families. Others had various experiences, and those folks are still being studied. I hope this reaches you in good health and spirits. Fair winds and following seas. Diving with Monsters by Ripped33. I'm from Oklahoma and I'm 14. Just this summer, I obtained my scuba certification for dives not going beyond 60 feet in depth. 
I got my certification in Gainesville, Florida, and have done multiple fresh and saltwater dives, all of them having been fun experiences, except for one, when I was diving off of a reef in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The water was very cloudy, and there was a strong current underneath. I was only with my dive partner who swore he never saw anything. As we were descending, I felt as if something was up, though I convinced myself I was just nervous. About halfway through the dive, I began to catch a glimpse of something out of the corner of my eye every so often, but by the time I turned to look at it, it was out of sight. From the glimpses I caught, it looked as if it had an elongated neck and four similar-sized flippers or fins. The only good look I had of it was when I got separated from my partner because of a stupid decision I made. He went around a large rock formation, and I went over it. I turned and did not see my friend, but I had gotten above some of the silt so I could see a lot clearer than before. When I looked immediately to my starboard side, I saw this huge, bizarre thing. It was sitting still and just staring at me, like I had no business being there, and quite frankly, I don't think I did. From what I could make out, it had massive teeth and a head like a sauropod from Jurassic Park. I freaked out and shot to the surface, without even thinking, and lost my partner until he surfaced almost a month later. But by the time he got up, the thing had disappeared. I told everyone so that they didn't think I was crazy that it was just a larger-than-life tiger shark, and I had panicked, because who would believe that I saw freaking Nessie down there? Thankfully, I made it out. But that's one location I won't go back to for diving. The following story appeared in a previous video on five creepy true fishing stories, but fits here nonetheless. Enjoy. It came from the ocean, submitted by Andro6657. In 1993, when I was 12 years old, I went fishing with my uncle Max. He had a fairly big boat with a nice engine we weren't going out very far though, but I figured we would be gone most of the day. We started early, around five in the morning, and drove around in the boat, scanning the coastal area before we finally found a spot to fish. We located a good spot next to an oil platform. It was still a bit dark, but we could see the supplies in the boat without a flashlight or any other lighting, so I figured we were fine. We'd only fished for about 10 minutes when we suddenly heard a bump on the bottom of the boat. It rocked the entire boat. I looked at my uncle and I shrugged my shoulders. He said, it's probably a really big turtle. Then he snickered. I laughed, but we were interrupted by a loud and odd sounding splash. I turned to my right to see the strangest sight I've ever seen. It was a creature, an animal of some kind. It was like a man, but his skin was like that of the old fish, the coelacanth. Brown, scaly skin covered the entire thing. He had white eyes and a gaping mouth. I swear, I even saw fins on him but it all happened so fast, I can't be sure. It had shot up straight out of the water, about chest high, then sank right back down again. I was so shocked, my heart seemed to stop. In my mind, I thought it had to be a prank or something. It surely couldn't have been a real animal. Still, it was kind of dark, but I swear I saw the shadow of the thing, swim off at an unnatural speed under the water, like a dolphin on steroids. My heart was pounding now. In fear and confusion, I looked back at my uncle, but the expression on his face, it scared me even more, because never have I seen my uncle so scared. We both trembled there on the boat, and without a sound, we called it a night, and ended our fishing early. The Beach Watcher by Ava 
At the start of the summer of 2018, my dad took my sister and I down to Galveston Beach in Texas. We live in Missouri, so we don't get to see the beach often, but thanks to having family down in Texas, we do get to go down every few years or so. He bought us each a shovel and pail for building sandcastles and let us pick out new swimsuits. When we got to the beach, I quickly made my way over to the sweet spot where the waves lap at the beach and keep the sand in an in-between state of dry and wet. My little sister joined me and together we began to build the biggest sand castle we could, which wasn't very big. The sand was not cooperating that day. We were having a good time nonetheless, until at one point when I was staring out at the ocean, I saw something peculiar, eyes and a face. It was maybe 30 yards out in the water where there were no people. It looked like a fish had poked its head out and was just taking in the scenery, acting a little bit chill. <sighs> All right, I thought, that's cool. What I didn't realize until a few seconds later was just how big the fish was. As it drifted a little bit closer to shore, I saw that the head of the thing was about twice the size of my head, so it was pretty big, and I couldn't see the backside of it, just the fishy face. And then it happened, the thing that had me and my little sister running screaming to my dad. The thing that I thought was a fish stood up, revealing a half-human looking body. Then, with a crab in its hand, it pulled it to its mouth and took a hearty bite right from the shell. It was so loud, we could hear it from the shore. By the time my sister and I made it to my dad to point out the creature to him, it was gone, and all that remained were ripples and the fear in my heart. It was the creepiest thing I'd ever seen, and the last thing I ever expected to see going to the beach. I guess I have this to say. Beware of the fish heads that poke out and watch you, because they may not be what they seem. The Faux Whale by Totoyami. A long time ago, my grandfather was a whaler. I know it's something we look down upon these days, but being a poor Japanese man with a family to feed, it was all my grandfather knew to do to provide for his family. There was one experience he shared with me about his whaling career that chilled me to the core the very first time I heard it. He always called the story the fake whale. He and the crew he was a part of were deep north in the water, about a day's journey from the coast. It was cold, and the first iceberg they saw, they knew it was time to turn back. That was until the crew spotted something. It looked to be a whale's carcass, fresh and intact. It was floating on top of the water. It was almost too good to be true. A whale they didn't have to kill, basically what you'd call a freebie. Steadily, the ship and its crew began to approach the carcass. When they made it to within 20 meters of it, that's when they were attacked. Tentacles or tendril-like things were sprouting out from the water and suctioning themselves to the side of the ship. The men were screaming and others like my grandfather were staring on in disbelief. The thing they thought was a whale drifting on the water began to twitch and its teeth began to chatter as if they weren't made of bone, but were some sort of muscle. It sank below the water until it disappeared, leaving nothing but its tentacles above. Apparently, it was using its body weight to capsize the boat, and the only thing that saved them, my grandfather said, was the fact that the wood on the side of the boat that was being attacked had recently been replaced due to a breach in the hull, causing the creature's suction cups to lose their grip. Once the tentacles were gone, the boat rocked violently until things were calm again, and the crew frantically made their way back to the coast. Back at the shore, the captain bought the crew around. They laughed and cut up at the local bar, but deep down my grandfather knew that they would never forget this near-death experience. Once again, a huge thanks goes out to my sponsor, Vikings War of Clans, for making this video ad-free and for supporting my channel. Please guys, take a few seconds to download their free and awesome game using the link below. It's literally free support for me 
and you get a great game in exchange. Thank you. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget, you can send me your true scary stories at darknessprevails.org. I'm looking for stories from backpackers. Just go to darknessprevails.org slash submit to share your stories. If you want to support this channel further, you can go to patreon.com slash darknessprevails. Donating any amount will get your name in the credits and you'll be able to download all future videos as MP3s with no ads. And if you're naked and you need some clothes, go to teespring.com slash darkprevails or click the shop button below and cover that bod with some Darkness Prevails merch. Thank you. Now, as usual, here are my five favorite early comments from my previous video about 10 unexplained creatures in your backyard. Irish Mud says, thanks Satan. That's more like it, and you're welcome. Ghost Macintosh takes advantage of this video being ad-free anyway and says Swamp Butthole. Ah, my fans are people of culture. Slushy Snow says, I love falling asleep to these stories. Such a help to my sleeping problems. I know how that feels. It seems the older I get, the longer it takes me to go to sleep. One day I'll be 40 something and I'll have to hit my head just to catch some Z's. I'm so glad I can help. No You says, I saw some furries having a meeting in my backyard once. I went outside and they scattered like mice. Next time catch them, cause they make good eats. The Darkness says, does my ex count as an unexplained creature? She sure does, my friend, she sure does. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for tuning in to another awesome Darkness Prevails episode. More scary stories are coming soon, so stay tuned. Until next time, here are my patrons who continue to donate. Remember to stay safe and stay creepy out there, because this world is a strange one.